this is Kian Success. I'm Mr. Big Up Dancing Tear. And they are only cool. Put, 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 put it down. Put it down, put it down. Tell them dancing clear, I put it down. Sweet. They dance from the corner and we put it on Showing at the area and we put it on awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome YouTubers to another Dan Sinclair quick fire interview Right, so big up yourself Dan Sinclair and go and big up yourself from Rooley Cooley It's Shawnee T hosting this, right? Right, so who we have here today? Who we have here? None other than Mr. Tony Terra Douglas. What are you saying, my brother? It's the greetings and blessed love to all the viewers out there listening. You see me? Respect. Uh, right there. Nice, nice. So, brother, we got this <laughs> quick fire interview, right? We're going right, to right. questions in your direction. See. Okay. So, we're going to kick it off like this. So, Terra, what, what age you got into the music, brother? Uh, let's see. Let's we'll go from the start. I was born in Jamaica. Where in Jamaica? Spanish town. Wow. But I grew up in Western Kingston, Tivoli Gardens. My mom and dad left me at the age of four. Mm -hmm. Grew up with my granny. She had uh, my aunties, my dad's sister's children. Also, she was coming to England. Actually, she brought me to England. Okay. But anyway, before I actually came to England, my mom and dad left me in Spanish town. Grew up in Western Kingston, Tivoli Gardens from the age of six. You know? Yeah. So I was there every morning in the market, coronation market to call it, mm -hmm. helping my aunt to them sell the food, survive all the struggle in the ghetto yeah. as you don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's where I came from um, originally. Mm -hmm. Then um, my mother and my father heard that I was running up and down wild in coronation market. <laughs> in the, yeah. So they sent for me at the age of 10. Okay. Came to England. Yeah. At the age of 10. My mother, rest in peace, Miss Alif, mm -hmm. my mother was the first woman to build her, well, not build it herself, but have her own sound built and played her own, own sound. What was the sound? In England, the Paddington sound? Terror. Uh, um, the sound is still around. We call it Terror Tone now. Okay. But originally it's the Paddington Terror, uh, right. which is Miss Alif's sound, the original, the first woman. To have her own song what, 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 what year was this? Can you remember? We're talking about 1966 67. Wow. At that time, I was the youngest sound man around. In those days, you had um, all the big elderly sound men, people yeah. like the great Duke Vin, who used to work for Sir Cox and Studios. Yeah. When I actually started playing sound, I was the youngest out of all of them. In those days, you had Fat Man sound, Count Shelley sound, Soprano B sound. Um, that's in that's in North. In in Shepherd's Bush yard, Sir Jesus Sound. Um and who else? Yeah, Sir Jesus in Shepherd Bush and um, some else. Anyway, in Alzen you had the people sound, which was Daddy Vigo, who was one of my producers eventually. Okay. And in Labrick Grove, you had um the great Dukevin. In Arrow Road, which is Paddington, which is where I first landed when I came from Jamaica. Yeah. As I said, my mother built her sound so I used to control my little patch of Paddington. All right. it's, you know, <laughs> so yeah. is the terror because you're terrorized? So basically, <laughs> I, I wasn't, I don't know, I, singing just seemed to happen. It's like between the Almighty and my mother, it was a blessing because when, to be honest, when I came to England, I was an idiot. I couldn't even write my name. I couldn't even sign my name at Heathrow Airport okay. when I came to this country. Yeah. So music wasn't even in my thoughts, because in Jamaica, as I said, I was a young boy in the market, sell food and then yeah. the So it's when I actually came to England and my mother built the song. Yeah. And that's when my interest in music first began. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it started from there, Paddington Terrace Sound, playing all around West London, yeah. amongst all the big giants, Sir Cox and the Fatmans. The Sir D's, the you know, yeah. all of the elders. Because as I said, I was the youngest at that time. I was only in my little 17, 18. And okay. the, the man that was, you know, grown ups yeah. compared to yeah, I. So anyway, sound business was where I started. But what happened was I was doing um, I was playing at a sh at a dance down in um, Wilson, yeah. W10, and um, it was a, a live show actually. Nicky Thomas was performing on the bill. Mm -hmm. 
and I was playing there um, with the next sound called um, the Musical Prince, which is at the time that was Michael Campbell who managed Aswad. Uh -huh. He was a part of that sound. Okay. But Nicky Thomas was doing a show, mm -hmm. and they had a little gap, and they said, "Did anyone want to come on the stage?" So I, my brother, because he wasn't, you know, Mark Keith Douglas never really had much interest in the sound. He, yeah. he, he started, he bought a little Casio and started learning to write songs okay, and I'm a singer. singing and all okay, of that. Yeah. So because I knew he had that little talent, when they said, does anyone want to come on the stage? I said, go up there. <laughs> feel him on the stage. So that was how my brother Keith Douglas See. actually started. See. So anyway, we're talking about in the, in the, in the, in the, in the late, late 60s, 70s in, in that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, from there now, my brother, did his first record, which was called Oh, I'm struggling in a Babylon for a little bridge named Eddie Erie, who was actually the A&R manager for Trojan Records, but he used to live a few doors away from me. Okay. So all when the first Abyssinian's album came out, yeah. big album, forward, I had that album on, on dub plate from early, early, because Eddie See. lived a few doors. Yeah, yeah. That's how I became, I got to know, because they all used to come like I said, Eddie lived a few doors from me. So all the major artists then used to, he used to go to Jamaica and, and um, sign them up to get um, them time there for the albums then. Yeah, yeah. So he was the one that used to, A&R man used to go there and sign up the artists then mm -hmm. and bring back the music to England for Georgia. So anyway, them, in them days, I'd be on the step, which is Ashmore Road, which is the Paddington, yeah. and people like, Bonnie Lee would be coming to my uh, house because Eddie lived next to her. I'd okay. be meeting well, all these Stryker people. Lee. Stryker Lee. Plus my mother was a great cook. <laughs> so whenever them out. come along to the room, <laughs> they would ask, we well, always sit them out and I eat food. Yeah. So people like Tapazuki, wow. Stryker Lee, Rankin Dread, John Holt, mm. um, the great Keith Hudson. I met all these people on okay. my road. See, see. And, and plus the biggest sound man, in England at that time was Mr. Eddie Yibo. He lived just a few doors from okay, me. Okay, so your community so, is strong. And my, yes, and my mother's boyfriend used to work with him. That's how my mother built the sound. Okay. Because her, her boyfriend at the time, her, her, she and my father split up yeah. after a few years. Well, within two years of me being in this country. So anyway, she was going out to the bridge in the Sal and um, with Mr. Eddie, who is actually Jazzwad's grandfather. See? So, it's funny how Jazzwad boss boss bounty killer in Jamaica. Yeah. Because his dad, in the early days, when Jazzwad was a little baby, his dad was called Bounty because he used to play on a radio station in Arlesden. What's it? Can you remember the name of the radio station? You can remember? I don't remember what the name of the station because okay. we're talking a long time long ago. Long time, yeah, for real. But um, his dad used to play on it. Jazzwad's father used to play on it. Okay. And he was called Bounty. See. And so strange that Jazzwad went to Jamaica years after and bust the bounty killer. <laughs> Show sure your God work, you know. Yeah. But um yeah. But um where I'm concerned into the singing now, as I said, my brother made his first little song. It wasn't nothing big, but it, it got it caught fashion, fashion records yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. So eventually they came around and started doing some work with my brother. That's when he did the big song um Cool Down the Mina. Mm -hmm. But big before, song. yeah, but before my brother big actually song. did did that big song, me and him used to, because I got fed up with the sound. But in the, in, at that time, going on to the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, the sound business seemed like it was winding down a bit, you know? Yeah. Plus, yeah. I sort of got fed up of playing at all these dances. So long. You was a selector. Now, it was you my was, sound. Okay, so you was a selector. My brother so, built the sound, so... so. Let, me have a, let me change that question, right? Yeah. Can you remember one of the first songs you ever buy for your song? You know, in those days, in those days, I used to send for boxes of records from Jamaica. Okay. Like I said, we're talking about in the early days, yeah. early, uh, late, late, mm. late sixties. So I used to send for boxes every, every week or every other week. I would get a box of forty-five records from Jamaica. Okay. So most at that time, most of my, my records would come okay. from Jamaica at the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so. Anyway, like I said, um, yeah, so Keith Douglas, I did a little minor hit, fashion came in, but before fashion came in, I used to move around with my brother, yeah. singing, because 
I wanted to get into the business. Keith, uh, is it your bigger brother or your younger no, Keith brother? Keith, my brother, is, is, is five years older? younger than me. Okay, younger, younger brother. So okay. before we actually did the the, 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 the big song, he, we, he used to go and sit with people like Paul Dawkins wow. and Pablo Gat. At yeah. that time, I hadn't even started singing yet. Yeah, yeah. But I used to love the business, so I used to go and sit in the background and like, for instance, Paul Dawkins and they'd be, my brother would be jamming with him and singing a bit of harmony. But I would be in the corner and I would, the two of them would be singing and I would sing a little harmony in the background. Oh, Paul Dawkins said, oh, we had a tune, I never knew you could have sing terror, man. Come in, man, and come join and sing some harmony. So that's how I actually okay, that's how you got into the business, into the business of it. Paul Dawkins, respect to uh, you. Yeah. So I started filling in, singing a little background with my brother okay. for Paul Dawkins. Then okay. from there, started singing background with my brother again with Pablo Gag. Wow. Then they were Junior Brown from Black Road. Don't go further. Yeah. One second. Before we start touching on the right. artist right. side of things, I just want right. one more question for you from, from, from your sound age. Right. What's one of your greatest memories on sound system? One of my greatest memories, I've had quite a few good memories. I've had quite a few memories. Um, I think one of the biggest and the greatest would for me, for other youth, was going into the four years' this club and playing with Count Shelley. Because them time to them man, they were the big daddy of the sound business. Wow, wow. I mean, like I said, I played with all, with all of them. I played yeah. with the Coxons, the Fatmans, the, 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 the Shelleys, the Sir D's. The, so, I played with nearly every major sound, mm -hmm. other you. Yeah. At them time, that was in my 17, 18. Yeah, they were yeah. all in their 25, 30, okay, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. yeah so yeah, as I said, uh, my brother. Yeah. So, like I said, you want to know how I got into the singing? Yeah, yeah. So, from there anyway, started knocking around with my brother, singing um, background vocals for one and two little artists. Yeah. Then the big step up now was when Michael Prophet came to England. Mm. 1980, well, early 80s anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, me and my brother were singing background vocals, some of the best shows I ever did. Michael Prophet was in his prime then. Yeah. Gunman show, and I'm yeah. teared on the wall. I see. Yeah, I remember them times. So, was you can yeah, so you can <laughs> yeah. imagine how I feel at that time. Yeah. I don't forget, you know, I wasn't a singer. I made myself a singer because yeah. when I got fed up with the sound, I never had, I wouldn't sing. I'm, I taught myself to sing. Mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to be a singer because I got fed up of the sound not doing anything and not making no money. So not only that, my little brethren, them people like Oswald and Delroy Washington, they all grow and come from my area. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm watching all these brethren that step up and moving on and applause, crowd and, you know, it, exciting. And I said, no, I want some of that. See. So from there, what I did was when I stopped playing the sound, I, I decided to start working with Oswald as a roadie. But I wanted to know the business. Mm -hmm. As I said, I wasn't no musician. I bought myself a little guitar and said, I'm going to make myself, I'm going to become a singer, songwriter. Mm -hmm. I wasn't blessed with the gift of being a singer and grew up in a church and all. It, it was not like that. Same, same. It's just me decided that I'm going to become a singer because I, I want to move to the next level from sound. Yeah. Buy myself a little guitar. King Sounds. I don't know if you know about King yeah, Sounds. Yeah, yeah. Bless up King Sounds. King Sound used to be up the road from me as well, because yeah. they start manage as well with Michael Campbell. Yeah. So all these people are in on my corner. So anyway, when I decided to give up the sound, I went to King Sound and said, Sounds, you know something? I'm going to come and sing at Sunrise guitar. And I go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go for playing guitar. But him could have played guitar. <laughs> so he used to come check the terrace. So I used to go up to King Sound and make a little bang on guitar. He <laughs> showed me two little cards. And, I go home and dead and cheeky, chick, chick, chick. <laughs> and then someone learned the thing. Um, yeah, because yeah, there was no way I was coming into this game and just be a singer. I had to be a singer, songwriter. Mm -hmm. Well, you grew up not around enough artists, so you yeah. don't know, yeah. So, anyway, from there now, I have a little guitar, but then as one now, I do the road thing. Because mm. I just wanted to learn it from the ground level. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to give the youth and my sound, a set of youth and my car, and say, I'm going to run the sound. You know? Keep them um, bent brothers, you know, a few, well, few brothers. Okay. So, anyway, I'm moving on now, and as well, like I said, I have a big tour. I come up to go Africa. That was my first time I've traveled. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now I have the bug for the business big time, no cars. Yeah, I fly go Africa. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, 
Yeah, so every time, anyway, we ended, I ended up going on tour with Aswa to Kenya. We were meant to go to Uganda at the time as well, but India and India that one with the captain. What year are we talking here? We're talking 1979. That wow. early days, wow, 79, wow, 80. Wow, wow. Not a long time. Mm. So anyway, on tour now in in Africa now, brings the phone now. Cause like me say, all of them you they used to come to my dance when yeah. I was Paddington Terror, the sound man. Yeah. My sound, all of them used to come. You saw charge them too. <laughs> <laughs> so when we start work with them on we got to Brinsley and, and, and Joby, the man, I said, well, I'm not Brinsley, show me a couple of cards. Even though it sounds that show me more, I learn fast. Yeah. So Brinsley is another Brinsley for me. another man who used to teach me how to play the guitar. Okay, you wow. know? So that's how it went from this. So now, spent about a year and a half, two years on the road with as one and Africa, as I said. Come back and decide to so make a branch off and do my thing now. Meanwhile, I make myself an artist. Yeah. So I come back and Learn me like a two three card now and could not go over and chick chick and start right. Actually, you know, so one of the first songs I ever sing, the legend Daddy Alton Ellis. What song? Um, it was the first song I ever wrote. I, I never even finished it properly. Okay. But it's not the name. But it's not the name. Imagine, sure, I don't remember the name. But Al <laughs> Alton Ellis, you may sing it. Cause I, I, like I said, that was the first song I ever tried. And Alton didn't like it. And okay. you know, Alton sung it, recorded it. Yeah? Yes. Two of, two of, two, um, I've recorded for the legend, Alton Ellis. Definitely Alton hear it and say, you know, I'm like that you wanna marry you. I'm gonna say, yeah. Come me shot now in a car. This is the legend, yeah, Alton yeah, Ellis. Yeah, for real. That's one of my personal favorite Alton, artists. you can't have it, man. Would yeah. Tell, come back to me with the tune. Okay. Brother. But Alton recorded it and then he recorded two songs with me. From there now, I get a little, I love it more, I'm a little name out there, a little bit slightly. Still, now I'm not major, you know. Yeah. But then the Blackstones come calling. Mm -hmm. Because um, me and my brother, as I said, were singing back when we so many people at the time. Paul Dawkins, they heard Blackstones heard. Because Karim, Ken Kendrick, he was Ken called Kendrick, at the yeah, time. Big up Ken. Big up Cheers, yeah. Damel. Yo, Quest, Blackstones, mm -hmm. Leon. Damel. Damel, yo. <laughs> Enough love and respect to the whole of the island. Yeah, See? Yeah, big up. So, yeah. So anyway, um, black students come calling. That man said, this is my first major step now in the car. Don't forget, like me said, he wasn't a singer. Yeah, yeah. He just had to try and think. <laughs> so, even though I did have, because I sing I mean, a little bit, but I don't know nothing about really singing. Like me said, I'm, I'm learning as yeah. I go along. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't naturally blessed with it. I am self-taught. Yes, yes. So anyway, them come calling and join the black stones. That's where I got a lot of my teachings. So respect to Leon. What 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 was one of the first songs you recorded with the Blackstones, brother? The Blackstones in those days, the Blackstones were the biggest vocal group around at the time. Yeah, and I, I joined them with "Sweet Feeling," "Sweet Feel," "Sweet Feeling." That was their big yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, here the thing: as soon as I joined the Blackstones, I had to go for audition and all them thing there. You know, pass the audition and the first thing at the time. They were just about to make a brand new album. Okay. Just about to make an album. So at the time I'd um had a little one at one song, I think, or two songs, and I bring them along and the man they make me get to put one upon the album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but as I said, this was my learning process. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to know the thing and moving on. Yeah. But from there, from from that Blackstone, I did two albums with the Blackstones. But while, while being in the, the Blackstones, I found that, no disrespect to Leon Leaf, huh? found a member of the Blackstones, but we kept singing do over adapted songs. Okay. And yeah. like I said, from I came into the business, I made up my mind I wanted to be a singer, singer. songwriter. Yes. So after spending about, I spent about 10 years, 12 years in the Blackstones. And then what happened was, um, I got a bit fed up on singing adapted. I wanted to write and sing my own songs. Mm -hmm. So me and Karim, Ken Kendricks, decided to leave Blackstones, form our own group called Quest. What year was this? Um, we're talking about what? 90... No, no, 2000 and... 2000 and... 
2000 and something anyway, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, we decided to form the group Quest, you know, so that we could, because me and Karen wanted to write all the original yeah, songs. Yeah. But in between all of that, you know, I'm very proud of myself, because as I said, I wasn't a natural singer, self-taught, and I'm very proud of myself. I've yeah. achieved so many things, met so many great people, traveled the world. Can't forget my boss, Flip Free as a uh, black hero. I was just going to touch on that. So Black what Heroes. Year? When did you join Black Heroes in the whole Joined Black Heroes from the very beginning, from the very start. Because Russ went to rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Flip free down to rest in peace. They used to come to my dances. Father Flip. Yeah, man, bless him, man. All the heroes family. Yeah, bless man. Big up all my heroes and she heroes. Yeah. So the heroes start. The heroes started. What's here? God, yeah, we're talking so long about that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, Black Heroes, 35 years. Mm -hmm. 25 years at least, mm -hmm. 27 years yeah, with a part of Black Heroes. So. But like I said, during all that time, in between all of that, I recorded, I got to record for people like Trevor Bow, rest in peace, Trevor Bow, Daddy Vigo, mm -hmm. which was my first single, solo single, as Tony Douglas said I ever did as well. Daddy Vigo, who was the actual sound man actually in the R's and called the People Sound. Which was a song that other you I personally admired because it used to play some beautiful music, you know. So as I said, I recorded for quite a few producers in my march in the business to, to to read somewhere. Um during that time I've sung background vocals for nearly every major record Jamaican artist you can think of. Give me so name name a couple for me. Some some um Derek Harriet. Um Delroy Wilson, wow. uh, Michael Prophet, you know about. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've had the greatest, one of the greatest pleasure, two of the greatest pleasure for me, as a little soul man who used to play these artists, Abyssinians. I've actually wow. had the pleasure of running on stage and singing as a part of the Abyssinians. I've done the same thing with the Eptones. Wow. So I give myself a tap. So would you, would you say that's, that's, that was your highlight in your in your oh, career between running out don't forget it i only used to play them record the other sound man as paddington and Terra back in the day you know? yeah never did i ever dream in my life ever that i would have the pleasure of running out onto the stage and and singing as an ep tones yeah and running out onto the stage and singing as an abyssinians <laughs> i could never I would have never thought me, Tony Terra, Douglas, would have ever shared the, the, the stage with my brethren Sata and Leroy Sibbles. Come I run out there as I, as I, as I to, I'm a feel like. Yeah. You know what it's like when you used to just dream and you used to worship these artists, mm. and then you're actually mm. standing stage side by side, singing as one of them. That's I'm big, very big. proud of myself. Yeah, man. Because I yeah, would have never, man. when I began, I never, I didn't know what I didn't have a clue. So the way things have turned out, I've got to give um, the praises to the Almighty and my mother, Miss Olive. Definitely. And quite a few people along the way who helped me along the way, you know? So you, you got a, a real extensive reggae oh, dancehall yes. um, history. Oh, but if yes. you could make any other music, what, what music would you make, brother? You know what? I love every, I love every form of music. Mm -hmm. I'm a balladeer, really. I love ballads. You see, my, my favorite reggae group, and there's, there's a few, but for me, Abyssinian is my number one group. For me, because I always loved harmonies yes, and the message man. that they delivered at yeah. the time yeah. was beautiful. You see me? I know, but if I the, to answer your question, the whispers are my favorite, my number one oh, soul group. That's nice. So if I was gonna do any other music, it would be music to sound like the whispers. Okay, so <laughs> here what? This is a question that we always ask in dancing clear. Right. Excuse me. If you could make a band. Yeah. With any artists, musicians, right. from living or dead, 
who would be in your band? You mean, you mean musicians? Yeah, everything? musicians and singer. You know what I mean? Well, I'm gonna have to have Sly and Robbie <laughs> for a start. You, know? you see? All right. Have have so, so we're gonna put on keys. Well, you know what I say? Um, why are Linda? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But, but there were so many great musicians yeah, at no, the time. Sorry. I mean, come on. I mean, drumming. You know, apart from Carlton Barrett, they was they was. You know, I don't even like calling names. Cause even artists of the day, if you ask me, is my favorite. I loved all of them. Yeah, I know it's difficult to, to call <laughs> there's one. Too many. There's too many. Cause to me, the greatest era of reggae music was those days from Definitely. from the sixties. There's a strength to the music. Yeah. Come on, in every way, mm -hmm. in every way, they will never be. An error, or uh, the music will never. There's no way it's gonna come to the level of what it was in those days. Cause it was a, a vibe thing yeah, and a spirit. Definitely. When the yeah. man, the man only like one man sit so down and do him thing. It's a group of people, yeah. and you have me. I feel your vibes. You have feel my vibes, and every man I feel our vibes. And yeah, yeah. that's why the music now will never be able to match the music that was made all those years ago mm -hmm. because it was not no one man thing it was a combination of spirits True. of a gathering yeah, of people yeah yeah yeah, yeah feel but, you yeah. can feel that presence in the yeah, music of the old time music definitely nowadays so yeah. tell me if you wasn't a musician what would you be doing right now T? as i said i never had no education as a youth but i live i was an idiot because i couldn't read and write when i come to this country and that's the fact and when i came to this country i still didn't get no education i spent my mother and father split up after two years. I spent one year there, one year there, one year there. All I kept doing when I was at school, when I come from Jamaica, when you did a mirror and I look upon and teach and all them things. It's a fact. Cause I, I, like, I never knew no better. I was, I was brought up in Coronation Market, Denham Town, yeah. Western Kingston. Yeah. Used to be called Bakawal when I was See. a youth. So when I actually came to this country, as I said, I didn't have much up there. See. It was just my common sense that broke oh, me through. Right. Because you know what, end of the day, you, you, all right, I don't like the word either, really. Yeah. Because you know what, just because you're not educated yeah, in well, that I way would, doesn't I, mean you're well, not well, educated as a man in, in life. Well, I had, I had a lot of pride. Yeah. From day one, from I was 15, I remember standing up when I, le when I leave school for the little time that I went. I remember, I remember, remember, remember standing on the stage at the job centre at the age of 15 in ours then. See? And I remember saying to myself, you know something, you don't have no head tap in a car. I really didn't. See? I never had no schooling. But there was something in me that said, you know what, you're buying making something sure. of yourself enough. Sure. So what I did was I started, like I said, educationally I never have it. Mm -hmm. But I did have physical. Yeah, yeah. And I met a black man, he was he said me stand up on the stage out of the job centre. God truth. And he said to me, I look for a job, young man. And I say, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah, I live in West London at the time. You know. He live in North London. He said, come and meet me at Essex Road, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I left Paddington Arrow Road from about 5 o'clock and reached the man yard at 6 o'clock because, as I said, I wanted to do something and I wanted to achieve in whichever way at that time yeah. I never knew what I was gonna do. Yeah. But he was a plaster. So I became his laborer. After working with this man for a certain t um length of time. We watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him and decide say you know what? Terra, you know, not, you know, I know it happened. You, know, you, you have to physically can learn this. <laughs> so <laughs> go out and go buy my trowel and my arc yeah. and yeah, yeah. And every time when we don't mix him up and set him up. I mix a little thing for myself and find a little far wall and start learning from the bit. And I became a plaster. I can plaster this whole house. Wow. That's self taught. So self -taught. That's Everything that I've done, I've that, been self taught. That's why I say that word either. It's not a. I understand it. Well, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never had because no you know what? You're a man skills. that self teaches yourself. Yeah. So there's a skill to that. I'm you know what? People can't do that. Blood. In every way. Okay. I've never had no education in any form of way, no matter in which way. Okay between the Almighty and my mother and myself, everything I know, I self-taught myself. Okay. So, Terry, yeah. I know your history is long and there's holy yes. more we can God talk about. Yeah, I know. You know, we can be here for days because I know <laughs> say, you, you're a historian when it comes to your Carnestone, yeah, yeah. Virgin. Well, I know that. Well, 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 but yeah. what can we expect from you in the future? Um, well, as I said, um, I, I, I was in Jamaica and 
you know, my mother, who I love dearly, mm -hmm. she was my backbone, because I never, even though I didn't know my father, my father died early, and I never really knew him, because like I said, I'm leaving at the age of four, he died yeah. at 56. Yeah. But my mother was always there. So I was in Jamaica about four years ago, decided that when I come back from Jamaica, I was going to keep my mother's memorial, because it was a 10-year anniversary. Okay. And I love my mother so much, I made it my duty that I said, by who can't cook, without any help, to keep her mem memorial, and I did. Okay, right. uh, the other um, um, thing that I wanted to do was put out an album for myself. And I did do it. My album called My Time. I, I, oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, see that? This. <laughs> my Time. I got a copy of this. Yeah. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. Okay, if you check it out, people. Yeah. Some big songs on it, you know what I mean? Featuring, you know yeah. what I mean? You got Daddy Ranks on it. Uh, yeah, I've Lloyd Brown on it. You know, we have you Quest. Know what I mean? Quest. You know? So if you check it yeah. out, baby. So, yeah. Check it out. But check um, it out, that album, half of the tracks were actually voiced in my testament, Yard Studio, because I, I, okay. I, I decided to set up my own okay. thing. So, um, yeah, 19 tracks. Um, respect to all the musicians them that play on the album. But there's a lot of various. Mm -hmm. um, production on it like Pickens, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Stingray, um, yeah, man. Big uh, up, you know, Stingray Dilly, big up, yeah, Jerry Lyons, yeah. Um, Tony Madison, the Teratone family. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't done too badly considering, as I said, um, I didn't know, I never had no, didn't know, no inclinations of what I would be. But as I said, I um, never had no schooling or nothing like that, and I'm very proud. I think I've done all right because, yeah, man. Met Definitely. prime ministers, presidents, driven in the limousines, lived in the, the big hot, hotels in America, how much flight, you know. That's where we come Met from. superstars from Stevie Wonder, went wow. dinner with um, uh, Curtis Mayfield, you know, Smokey Robin, Miracles, you know. Yeah, Reeves. Yeah, Martha Reeves. Oh, we met <laughs> so know, many know, super know, Jesse Jackson, I've met PJ Patterson, I've met mm -hmm. Princess Han, I've met so many Music. Which I could have never imagined that I would have had such a life. But as I said, I was a little no one who never had nothing but nothing. Uh, yeah. But like I said, the Father Almighty and Definitely my mother, have to give praise, I give man. them the, the praise. Definitely. You see me? So people, there you have it. There you have it. That's just a little snippet a of a man's snippet. life. It's a very small piece. We could be here all day talking. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of the dancing clear. Yep. You know what I mean? Reggae vibes. You yep. know what I mean? Tony Terror. Without a doubt. Yes, we have to give thanks and praise. You know, to Dan and Rooley and, Rooley cool and Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> You're done, bro. Yes, my brother. Your love and respect you know, every Dan. time yes. and our blessings. And yes. we will be back. Uh, this was just a little snippet of the yeah. full thing. So, you know? So the next time we come, we will give the fullness. See you have it. So there you have it, people. Sarah Tony Douglas representing Dancing Clear. See? And we're going to be out now. Boom! Respect. Blessed. <laughs>